thank y'all for tuning into my channel if you made your way here it's great um, please hit that subscribe button if this video doesn't pertain to you go to my channel go to the playlist labeled well q a and you will find dozens of videos there and practically any of them could probably fix whatever problem you have depending on whether it's a submersible pump a jet pump like this one a tank a filter uh, dirty water whatever the case may be just uh, click subscribe go to my channel find the playlist that's labeled a well q a and it'll take you to all the videos that are well related so let's get to this video here this is uh, specifically a jet pump system um, above ground pump not a submersible pump so what you have here you have your motor you have your pump there's an impeller inside of here this will be your two suction pipes that will end up going down into the well this is your well seal so basically what would happen is this pipe would go down this pipe would go down here you go down in the well say 50 or 60 feet and you're going to find this at the bottom so there's a few different situations that could happen um, and i'm going to go through with them so when you're trying to prime the pump you're going to need a t on top of your discharge here with a cap or a plug just like this one and this is where you would dump your water into here you'll pour your water into here to fill this up and in turn it's going to take probably five gallons of water but it will fill your drop pipe. So it's gonna fill the pump housing and it's gonna fill these two. It's gonna fill all the pipes going down to the bottom. Sometimes if you pour it too fast, you're gonna get an airlock. <clears throat> That's a pain in the butt to deal with. So when you do do this, put a funnel here and slowly pour the water. Now, if you're dealing with trying to prime the pump and that's why you're here, you're gonna take this valve, you're gonna shut this valve off to the house and now it's only going to keep the pressure inside of this area here. And if you turn it on, it might jack all the way to 60 and cut off or 50 or whatever the whatever your switch is uh, is set for. So if it does build up pressure and cut off, don't open this valve wide open. I want you to crack this valve ever so slightly until you can hear water flowing. That's going to slowly allow the water pressure to sleep, to seep down and slowly allow it to go to the house or go into the tank. If you go wide open, what will happen is it'll drop, its, uh, it'll drop its pressure and then the pump will lose prime and start to cavitate. So that's the importance of having a valve there. Now another thing is you could have um, high mineral water and your pump be okay, but it'll, it'll run all the way to zero and then about 10 15 seconds later it'll cut back on all on its own what happens there is this little feed tube will plug up with sediment because these are typically cast iron the water is going to rust and the rust is going to build up inside of here or it's going to build up inside of there that's that's pretty common for jet pumps um typically now with modern stuff i just don't install jet pumps but a lot of people on my channel have been asking for them so i figured i'd do a short little tutorial on it um <clears throat> so you can clean this out and at work what i would do is just get rid of the switch altogether here and plumb it over you know in some of your plumbing pipes just to get it off of this line um but you would then have to extend the two wires coming from your pump now if it's a switch problem now don't do this on yours because yours is going to be hot when, with your two two leads that come in here don't touch these this is your contact it opens and it closes when this thing sees 30 psi it will close and the pump will run and then once it builds up to 50 the contacts open and shut the pump off now sometimes you'll get a bug that comes down in here and it'll fall into the switch and that thing will close on that bug and it will not allow it to to do a uh, a, a complete connection so turn the well breaker off if you have an electric meter test to make sure that it was the right breaker and then go in here and look to see if you have anything in between those contacts and sometimes you can take a tiny little nail file or you can take a flathead screwdriver and you can st stick it in there and go up and down and work it and try to clean whatever it was in there and sometimes it's carbon buildup but if your switch is the problem then typically a switch dies because your tank is bad 
So you're going to want to watch my video on pressure tanks to understand pressure tanks. I could go into another 10 minutes on pressure tanks. So be sure to watch that video after you watch this one. So that's really all you have to worry about with the pressure switch. Now, if you do not have water and it's on zero and you know the power is there and these switches and these contacts are stuck open, that means this tube is clogged because this may have pressure on it but this is on zero because you have a clog up here it's not allowing this to read pressure instantaneously it's it's taking that clog and it's messing it up so if you look and you open your cover and you see your your contacts are open like this you're going to want to clean this spout this tube and this right here or just replace the whole switch along with all that now if you're having a problem priming or the pump runs but it only builds up to 20 psi or 30 psi and won't build all the way up to cut itself off then your problem is down the well it's going to be on your injector here so this is an injector and this is a check valve depending on the age of your jet pump if your jet pump is i'd say 15 to 20 years old and nothing's been done on the system what typically wears out in these is this bottom piece right here so the way these work, it's a sucking action. So water is forced down the one inch pipe. It makes that turn and it goes back up the inch and a quarter pipe. Well, when it makes that turn, water then sucks in from the check valve here. It pulls it in. So every time that pump runs, water comes down this pipe and makes that sharp curve. The injector will wear out from the inside out from where that water has to make that sharp curve all the time and that's where it'll, it'll wear it out it'll create a pinhole down here and that pinhole will be and allow pressure to shoot out of here and it's not allowing that sucking action to come all the way up and it's not allowing it to build pressure and sometimes you'll notice when you prime it like no matter how many times you prime it it may work a little bit but next thing you know it's cavitating again and it's lost prime and you try it again and again and again and you can't figure it out then it's down here in your injector now if the pump cycles if the pump will build up to 50 and cut off and then it goes back down to 30 then it goes back to 50 then it goes back to 30 that's called cycling it might happen every 10 seconds it might happen every 20 seconds this is if you're not using water in your house if it's cycling while you're not using water the problem is your check valve because the way check valves work i have one here that looks a little different see that plunger how that plunger moves so the way this one is is designed if you go like this when the pump kicks on that plunger is pulled up and water is allowed to flow through but when the pump turns off that plunger allows water to go through when you turn the pump off that plunger closes and doesn't allow all the water and all that pressure in the pipe to leak back down from the intake of this grate here so if it's cycling it's this if you're having a hard time building pressure and a hard time priming the pump it's your injector if your contacts are stuck open it's the feed to the switch here and you need to clean these nipples if your gauge says it's on 100, your gauge is probably broken. These are made for probably a nickel in China. You can replace them. They sell them at the hardware store for five bucks. If you put you a new one on, then you'll know for certain that this thing isn't messed up to where you can get an accurate reading and an accurate diagnosis of what you're working on here. But that's about all it is for a jet pump system. Now you do have some jet pumps that are 240 volt and you have some that are 115 volt and some of them most of them nowadays are interchangeable you have to take this cover off here and move some wires around and it'll tell you right here motor is now wired for 230 volts and 115 volt the motor may be wired for 115 see the motor plate for details so yeah you can take this off and switch it over to 115 but they run a lot cooler on 230 volts but me personally i recommend putting in a submersible well pump whether it's a three inch or a four inch pump uh, they're just a whole lot easier to work on and the amount of money you're going to spend in labor dealing with one of these you could have already put in a submersible pump and did away with the old technology a uh, bad thing about these is 
uh, they burn about five times the amount of electricity as a submersible pump, so it uses five times you know the amount of effort to get it because all it's doing it's circulating an inch of water in order to get a quarter inch of water difference. A submersible pump, it's always giving you a solid one inch column of water coming up. This is only giving you the difference in the two pipe sizes. So you can flow maybe five or six gallons a minute with this, but you can only suck it from probably 60 or 80 feet down in the well. A submersible pump can go down 100, 200, 300, or 400 feet. All depends on how big of a pump you get. But I hope this video helped somebody out. I know a few people have asked on my other videos to do a, a tutorial on jet pumps. I just don't install them. Um, you can tell that this is new. This was only about three years old. And uh, the lady that I had worked for had real bad iron problems. So there was no way for me to flush the well and camera the well and clean the well with a jet pump. It just didn't get rid of the volume of water that I needed to get rid of in order to clean it. Now, if you have dirty water and you want to know how to clean it, I have a video on that as well on loop chlorination. Um, just be sure to go on to my channel, find that playlist labeled Well Q&A, and there's a list of videos right there. Uh, just look at the titles. And if you have any questions, you want any guidance, feel free to comment on any of these videos. All my comments are always live and they are always answered. Sometimes you may have a question that is already in the comment section so feel free to read some of the comments and that might actually be the question you have nine times out of ten i've answered the same question over and over again so i hope this video was informative for anybody out there who needed help with jet pumps if you haven't hit that subscribe button please go ahead and hit it if the video was helpful for you or you liked it please give it a thumbs up that helps this video move its way to the top and if you've noticed any of my other videos i'm probably the most explanatory person when it comes to well pumps uh straight to the basics verbatim to where anybody can understand it so i'm just trying to uh to benefit from that youtube algorithm without hitting that like button it really doesn't do anything for me but i hope you enjoyed the video have a good day take care